everybody, welcome back to the Charming Data Community, where we develop skills in data visualization, data apps, and artificial intelligence. In this video tutorial, what we are going to learn is how to incorporate JavaScript graphs into your Python Dash app. Now, if you're working with Dash and building your Python apps, you most likely are also working with Plotly Python graphing library, right? There's over 100 graphs that you can create with one or two lines of code in Python. However, some of you might be very good in the JavaScript programming language and prefer to build your graphs in D3 or maybe in Leaflet JavaScript, in um, high charts or apex charts, right? These are beautiful graphing libraries as well, but these are in JavaScript. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to incorporate JavaScript graphs seamlessly into your Dash app, right? Now, I want to thank Yazid, my friend. This is his code. This is in this GitHub uh, repo that I will share under the video. I incorporated it. I put it inside my repo, but this, this is fully his code. So to get started and to make it a lot easier for you to follow along, make sure to pause the video and copy all of these uh, folders and files inside your um, uh, to your computer, right? To whatever folder, just copy it into your computer in this kind of structure. You have the assets folder with the two JS files. You have the app.py and the data.py. And it's going to look like this on your VS Code or PyCharm or, or wherever. All right, pause the video and get back. Uh, click the play button when you're ready. All right, so I'm going to open the app.py file. And the first thing you want to do is run your app. For you to successfully run the app, right, you're going to need to install the Dash library and Dash Mantine components. So make sure to pip install Dash and pip install Dash Mantine components to your virtual environment or to your computer so you can run the app. Then just click here to run it and click on this link, and this will give you this apex bar chart, right? Which changes as you change the country um, value. All right, so what's happening here is we incorporated our, our libraries, um, and we are from data, we're importing the tray data, right? We put our data, all our data inside of this file right here, data.py. Right. Some people will incorporate data from CSV sheets, some from a APIs. In this case, our data is inside of the data.py file. So we just call it into our app from data import tray data, which is obviously this one, tray data. And now we have our tray data inside our app and we're going to store it. DCC store is a dash store component. This is how we store data onto the browser. So when this app first loads, the data is stored on the client side on the browser. All right. Now, because this is Python, right? This is a Python file and a Dash app, you, uh, you cannot pip install Apex charts. Apex chart is a JavaScript library. So we're just going to incorporate or like install the library, um, import the library with the CDN. We're just incorporating this uh, external script into our Dash app. Now with this, we can actually build our Apex uh, charts. Right. And now we have the layout. And this is mainly what we are doing with our Dash app. We are building the layout, the user interface around the JavaScript uh, graph, right? The JavaScript bar chart. So as you can see here, we have our title JavaScript charts inside a Dash app. We have our title right here. And then we put everything in the center. And uh, you're going to have the, this, the segment control, these countries, Australia, USA, Canada, Australia, USA, Canada, with the initial value Canada. So if I put this as USA and I refresh, the initial value is going to be Canada when the page first loads. And then we have this empty div, right? We're going to hashtag out the client side callback, save it, and we'll see that everything is going to go inside this div. Right, the all the whole chart, the whole bar chart, but it's we're going to do that with the callback. Right now, you'll see that I have no chart in here. I just have this paper. You can see a little bit of shadow to the right to the left, and I have the segment control. This, but this div is empty. The children is empty. 
And we're going to put inside the children, we're going to put here the graph through the client side callback. Control, we'll hashtag this back in, save it, and now you see the graph right here above the segment control. So how do we incorporate this bar chart from Apex chart into our Dash app? Well, in this case, we're using the client side callback. Because Apex chart is JavaScript, and because we can use everything, we can use the client side callback to do everything on the client side, on the browser. So we don't have to pass our information and our graphing library and our instructions back and forth from the server to the browser, server to the browser. It just makes things slower and less efficient. So we um, um, imported our client side callback and client side function, and this is where declare. This is where we declare a function, or at least where we uh, um, tie to our JavaScript function right here. So let's let's take a break for one second and look at the apexchart.js file right here. Asset apexchart.js file. Here you'll see that our namespace is apexchart and our function name is area chart, right? And that is exactly what we have to. Um, mention in our client side callback. We have our client side function with a namespace apex chart and the function called area chart right here, area chart. Every namespace can have two, three, four, or five function. You can have, uh, every function can have a different graph. In this case, we'll have one namespace with only one function called area chart. All right, now what we need is two inputs. All right, we're gonna take the data from, from the Dash app that exists on the browser. And we're going to take the value of this, of this um, segment control component, this value right here, either Canada or USA or Australia. We need these two things in order to build the Apex bar chart, right? We need the data and we need the country so we can filter the data um, and create new traces, right? Create a new bar chart. So the first input is the data, and the second input is the value of this one of the countries chosen. And this is what you have here. The first input of this area chart function is the data, and the second input is a selected country, just a string. All right? So now that we have our inputs, now we can actually build the graph inside our JavaScript file. The first thing we want to do is we are listening to we're getting the element that belongs to this apex chart id remember this id if we go back here this is the id right here right so the children of this id if there's anything in there we're going to erase it and we're just going to create a sign an empty string and we want to do that because every time the client side callback is triggered we don't want to build another graph and add another graph and another graph, we want to erase the graph that exists on the browser, put an empty uh, string in there, build the new graph, and then return it at the very end right here. All right? Um, hashtag this out. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, just hashtag this out, and then you'll uh, rerun the code, and you'll see what happens. But this has to be... Um, this line has to be here. And look at the data now. Now is where we are filtering the data. We're taking the tray data, which comes from here, this, this data right here. We'll, fill, we'll take in this um, uh, selected country, and we're filtering the data based on the selected country, right? In this case, Australia. So now it's only going to be Australia. It's going to be our new data. We're going to create an options variable. And you obviously probably know JavaScript if you're looking at this video, so I don't have to repeat every line of code, but we're building the labels, the y-axis, the a-axis, the opacity, titles, data labels. And here at the very end, we're going to create a new apex chart, uh, adding these options from above, this whole, the whole variable, and inserting it into our apex chart um, ID, right? This is an HTML div right here. Right here, it's going to go right here inside our children component, the children of this HTML div. And here's where we render the chart, and the chart being rendered is going to be displayed on the page. And that's it. And then we don't have to return anything. We say return window dash client, no update, because we do not need to update the output. In Dash, when you write a client side callback, you have to include an output. That's the syntax, the structure of a client side callback. 
Even if you don't need it, you have to include it. So we just included this, right? Output children, but we just said, um, no, no update. We actually don't necessarily need it. We already rendered the chart um, directly through uh, the JavaScript function right here in the uh, in this element ID, the Apex Area Chart ID right here. All right. So that is it. That is how you incorporate an Apex chart and other similar charts in JavaScript into a Dash app using the client side callback. And this is one way of doing it. I'm also, I told you at the beginning, the I'm going to give you um, Yazid's uh, uh, GitHub repo here, this one, because he shows us if you um, git clone this repo, you will actually be able to run this, right? Well, you have multiple charts, Apex, high charts, leaflet, D3. Uh, and he does something slightly different. The difference here with what he does is he, let's take the Apex chart, for example, the Python file. This is one of the pages. He doesn't, he only takes the data input, right? Here, we also took the input of the country. He doesn't do that with Python, with Dash. In Dash, he only takes the data. The input of the segment control, the value, he's actually going to take and analyze directly in JavaScript. So he'll go to the assets and we'll go to Apex chart. And you'll see here, there's only one function argument, only the data. But at the very bottom on line 65, this is where he's listening to this uh, to the value, the value of the select country chip ID, right? He's going to listen to this right here, the value of the select country trip ID. And then he's doing, he's taking that, he's filtering the data, you see filtering the data, rebuilding the chart, and then rendering the chart inside um, the Apex chart uh, ID, the HTML div right here, right? So that's the only difference between how I, what I showed you, which is actually what Yazid showed me, and what Yazid is doing here with uh, with the bigger uh, Python data app that has four separate pages. So very cool. I was really excited when I learned this. Thank you, Yazid, for teaching this uh, to me. Um, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to join the, join the Charming Data community where we work on monthly projects together to learn data viz, data apps, and AI integrations uh, while we develop our career uh, project portfolio. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. I'll talk to you soon.